Hello, everybody, and welcome back to GameStack Podcast right here on We Just Love Games Network. You're listening to episode 154. I don't even like fun things anyway. So, hello, I'm your co-host, Vendertron. Joining me this evening is our other co-host, Shaleen. Hello, Shaleen. Hello, hello. How, How are, are you doing? doing? How are you doing, darling? Oh, well. <laughs> um, okay, I guess. Um, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. It was, uh, we had a holiday here in the U.S. It was 4th of July. I guess you oh, guys yeah. had one too. It was Canada Day. But you're still dealing weekend. with the fireworks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Every night, forever, For like there are the... fireworks. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, also, my uh, it fell on a Tuesday, the 4th of July, and my job was super nice and decided to just give us Monday and Tuesday off. Hey, that's nice right imagine having a job that values its employees i also got a raise today i forgot to tell you about that Ooh, that's yes exciting. like a, a good raise i'm really excited this is the first time i've ever felt fairly compensated for the work i do but anyways that's um that's kind of beside the point but uh we we crammed the work of a five-day week into the the time of a three-day week so i'm very right. tired yeah 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 <laughs> How about you? How are you doing? How, how's doing... Canada? Is it still on fire up there? Uh, yep, still on fire. Um, mm. it's very hot here. Um, but we've had a lot of rain lately, so that's been good. Um, did some hiking last weekend. Had a run in with a grizzly, so that was fun. Ooh. Yeah, and her mama, uh, the mama and her cub. Um, it was actually a close call. It could have been dangerous, but uh, we were signaled by some bystanders that there was on the other side of the bushes where from where we were there was a grizzly and we would have never would have known until it was too late so that's terrifying I, bears are what you so sign up scary for. this is what you sign up for but uh running into a grizzly is one thing running to a running into a mama grizzly with her cub is like that's something that i never want to check off my list mm -hmm. <laughs> right mm -hmm. so but uh, today's a good day. It is July 7th. And you know what that means, Shaleen? What does that mean? My car's paid off. Woo! Congratulations! Paid off that today. That is a huge milestone, I Thunder. I know. So, oh, I'm so happy for you. It's always a good feeling when you pay off something. That feels so good. It yeah. feels so good. Yeah, it's been a long four years. Good car, Congratulations. though. Congratulations. Um. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I've been I've been trying to work, uh, trying to get work done, but I've been playing the role of nurse as well. My mom fractured her left ankle, and uh, so she's she's even more stubborn than she normally mm. is. <laughs> so we've been kind of managing that. But she actually managed to get a referral to specialty uh, care for orthopedic, um, for an orthopedic specialist by next Thursday. That's not bad. Like, shocking. That is not um, too long to wait. No, it's like they got her in in less than a week. So mm -hmm. uh, that's impressive. People are always complaining about how terrible the healthcare system is. Um, but, uh, you know, that's that's pretty damn good for specialty care considering. But yeah, so it's been a busy week. It feels good to be here and on the show with you, as always. If you uh, if you don't uh, if you don't remember last week, we had Raven. Raven's View on the show as a special guest. Uh, so check out episode 153. Uh, that was a really cool episode that we did talking about uh, what it's like being mature gamers and the video games that made us, etc, etc. And uh, he weighed in it's on... really fun. I enjoyed getting to know Raven's View. Yeah, yeah. He's a nice chap. It was nice to have him on the show. And he's always welcome back, of course. Um, the show is sponsored by Oak and Crow Coffee. If you head on over to oakandcrow.com, you can pick up a bag of We Just Love Coffee blend and $2 from every purchase of that blend goes to the Children's Miracle Network. Uh, don't forget to tell your friends about the show. Follow us on Twitch and other various social media platforms and uh, you'll get notifications of when we go live, maybe. Um, I mean, you'll get it in the Discord. And how can people join the Discord? You can join our Discord by clicking the link on our Twitch page over at twitch.tv slash we just love games. That link is live whether or not the show is, so you can just go over there and, uh, and click that link. Alternately, shoot us a message on social media and we'll get you the link. 
Yeah, yeah. So we do have some news this evening, of course. Um, we're, we've got a backload of screenshots. We've got a s- s- screen shot stack. Screen stack? Shot stack? <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of the best way to phrase that, and I've got nothing. Yeah. Uh, so, so lots of screenshots from the community from the last week since our last episode. Uh, so... Uh, we'll go through those as well and some stocks and then we're gonna just cap things off with a regular old-fashioned show and talk about our gameplay let's hop right into it with this just in all right hook it to my vein Shaleen. what do you got? okay we're gonna be learning about the news together today uh because <laughs> your girl threw it together from from joseph's email do you need, a, always, do you shout need out me to, to slap joseph you with, like a cold fish or something <laughs> <laughs> as always shout out to joseph tao we appreciate the work that you do in putting together the news drop for us every week so i i put my favorite news article at the top because this is our podcast and we do what we want uh <laughs> Pokemon Sleep got a new gameplay trailer. Okay. Kotaku has put gameplay in in like quotation marks. Um, but I'm I'm kind of excited for Pokemon Sleep. Okay. I enjoy sleep tracking apps, and I uh, I loved having the sleep tracking function on my Fitbit back when I used a Fitbit all the time. Uh, I think it's a fun thing. I like to see like how restful my sleep is and that kind of thing, mm-hmm. and adding a gamification segment to that forget about it i'm gonna have so much fun i'm gonna top all the leaderboards i'm really good at sleeping i i am gonna own this game it's gonna be amazing and this trailer is really cute it's very very cute uh i i think likely this will not be a hugely popular pokemon project i i think i may be uh if not solitary I, i may be very lonely in my uh, excitement for Pokemon sleep. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But it looks super, super fun to me. Uh, You have um, a big Snorlax who is your, your napping buddy. And uh, he's the primary resident of of your sleepy, sleepy Island. And every week uh, your Snorlax grows bigger And as it grows, you'll get a chance of seeing rare sleep styles, especially if you get regular sleep. And the different Pokemon that are attracted to your island because of your sleep have different sleep styles and and, um, they, it's cute. It's just adorable. It's it's really, really cute. Shaleen, is this the first time in which we've seen a video game that you can play in your sleep? I feel like maybe so. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's really what it is, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. It, or is it just a sleep sleep tracking app that's, like, gamified? It, I think that one, actually. Uh, it is It is a sleep tracking app, and it is a gamified sleep tracking app. But it is adorable, and... Um, I, may I, I, just, I may have to give this a go. I find it really funny that nintendo is is trying so hard to take care of us i think i've compared it in the past to like the mom that hides broccoli in in the brownies and stuff yeah just trying to make us live healthier lives because nintendo was the first company of course to to put alerts in their games of being like hey you know you've been playing for two hours now do you think maybe you might take a break and that's when you rage and you go no i'm not ready (laughs) <laughs> and then we have we have like Pokemon Go that tries to get us up and walking because Nintendo felt this tremendous guilt about being such a large part of creating the sedentary generation. And now they realize, wait a minute, they're just staying up all night playing their Switch. How, how can we get them to sleep? Yeah. Somebody get Pokemon on the line. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I just, I think it's great. I'm looking forward to it. I wonder if Pokemon Go is actually successful, though. As a, as, as in a, what way? As a health intervention. I think 
So yeah. Was I, it ever studied? I need to look up. I need to Google Scholar this like right now. <laughs> I know I walked a lot more uh, during the time that I was actively playing Pokemon Go. I, I think it was good. So my entire family would go for wow, a lot more there's walks. There's actually like... 2002 okay wait a minute 33,600 hits in google scholar when you look up pokemon go wow so so google scholar is a thing i thought you were making a joke no no google scholar is a thing yeah i had no idea here's a paper impact of pokemon go on physical activity a systematic review meta-analyses and the conclusion is playing Pokemon Go was associated with a significantly statistically significant but clinically modest increase in the number of daily steps taken among game players. One challenge for future physical activity interventions using Pokemon Go is to re retain active engagement once the initial nov novelty has worn off. Additional mm -hmm. studies with longer follow-up periods and experimental study designs are needed to assess the extent to which Pokemon Go and other augmented reality games can be used to promote physical activity. So, modest increase in physical activity. Um, but that's that's kind of what I was suspecting. Like, there's this... Mm -hmm. There's a waning period. Like, people are like, oh, it was fun for a while, and now I don't really... But there is still people... That are like religiously. Absolutely. Like Carlo's sister's partner, when they come over, she's like on her phone and she's like yeah. fighting Pokemon. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you doing? She's like tapping like crazy. <laughs> she's like, I just That's gotta great. I just gotta catch this Pikachu. Like <laughs> Um I love yeah. it. It's That's fun. I like the I like the idea of the sleep because it's it's it is fun because we have so much sleep tracking technology that just tells you how terrible you're doing with your sleep. But now we have the opportunity of being told how terrible we are at sleeping with the happiness of a Pokemon there to, mm -hmm. to make us feel better about it. <laughs> and you get to like have, have the imagination that, Oh, look, this little Pikachu came and visited me in the night. That's, that's so much better than my usual sleep paralysis demon. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it gives parents a, a, a sort of like a free pass too for the tooth fairy <laughs> mm. you know it's like <laughs> sorry we uh tooth fairy didn't stop by but pikachu was there last night <laughs> oh. oh that's great so the sims 4 is still the active sims game right isn't that wild the uh, sims 4 has yeah. when did that game come out uh Sims it's been 4. ages, right? Sims Just ages. 4 was published September 2nd, 2014. Yeah, it's been a minute since Sims 4 came out. And yeah. it's still getting updates. Um, but we have some Sims 5 news. This is a Games Radar article by Dustin Bailey. It looks like The Sims 5 is going to be free to play. Cool. And there is a job listing... Um, so the, the Sims 5 is currently known as Project Renee. It will be free to enter with an in-game marketplace. And a new job listing is suggesting that. EA and Maxis are seeking a head of monetization and marketplace for the Sims 5. And among other responsibilities, this role will handle Project Renee's in-game marketplace of content and UGC free and paid and pricing of all content in this free-to-enter game, ensuring we have an optimal pricing and content architecture. <sighs> the devs had not previously said whether The Sims 5 would be free, so this free-to-enter line is particularly notable. It is unclear whether EA considers free-to-enter distinct from free-to-play, so we could see a situation where a chunk of the game is available for free, but the full game is still um, locked behind a paywall. Okay. But that is speculation at this point, and it's possible that they haven't even decided yet what they are going to do. I love this. <clears throat> I love this. It's it's so good. I mean, look how look how modern the cities are. Uh is this actual footage? This or is the is Sims this... Five launch trailer. What channel is this? Where did, um, where did you find this? Um, this may be a fan edit. Origin Z. This is most likely a fan edit. Really? Mm -hmm, sorry. Uh, 
Well, yeah. let's find the real trailer. I don't know if there is a trailer at this point. We're still very early. Well, um, I'm excited for Sims 5. What I would like to see is a world that is a mimicry of a world that is possible. I hope those microtransactions aren't predatory. Yeah. I mean, they're probably going, they probably will be, but mm -hmm. I'm cautiously optimistic. I think that the Sims 4 can make a real statement. Um, because they've literally exhausted every possible avenue of the Sims, which I th right. kind of think is why they haven't made a new one. Mm -hmm. But I think there's an opportunity for them to make a sort of maybe a futuristic Sim. Um, right. Possibly that of like, you know, a more eco-friendly and sustainable world. Oh, I right? like that idea. Um, You know, modern cities with less hostile architecture and like homes and you've when you design your homes you put like solar know, panels solar panels and stuff and like yeah. yeah yeah that sounds really fun are you gonna play it did you play no. sims 4 no no i okay. played a little bit of sims 3 i've never really been into the sims i played like the original sim city but that was the last time that i had fun with a, a sim title hmm. so but you know what else is a lot of fun? Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Yes. It's a great game. Great, great game. And uh, according to this IGN article by George Yang, Ubisoft is working on a remake of Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Uh, this was a 2013 game. And the remake is in its early stages, won't be complete for a few years. Cool. There's a team at Ubisoft Singapore that is heavily involved, and this is the same studio that is helping out with uh, Skull and Bones. So, okay. Um, I wonder if that is part of the reason why Skull and Bones is stuck in development now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't but, know. I because it was stuck before. So yes, it's it's been in development hell for quite a while, but. I would welcome an Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag remake because that's that's just a great game. Mm -hmm. I'm for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you I know agree. what wasn't a great game, though? Lord of the Rings Gollum. Oh, no. How yeah. did this creep back into our news feed? Uh, well, it, it's, it was such an abject failure that all internal projects, including the development on another Lord of the Rings title has been stopped and the publisher Daedalic Entertainment is is not doing any internal development going forward. They will be focused on publishing, licensing, sales, and marketing. So I uh um wait a minute. It it basically killed their internal de development studio. When you say other Lord of the Rings project, do you mean the one that was recently announced? No, no, this one is is different. Because that that was with the that was the Xbox. It was mm -hmm. an Xbox exclusive. That's a wasn't different it? game. That is a different it's game. It's different. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Interesting. Yeah, this is uh kind of sad because Daedalic Entertainment had previously done very, very different uh work in yeah. terms of game development and they were largely lauded as great games. It was mostly point and click adventure titles, narrative games. And uh, by all reports, they were good games. Yeah. So it's a shame that they won't be able to return to what they're good at. That um, the, the failure of this game was so profound that, you know, I feel like this is a bit of a kiss of death, like with no man's sky, People were so disappointed with it. And then they just pushed updates for the rest of their life. Um, and like their, you know, um, Data Lake is, is promising to pledge to improve uh, the game via future updates. But is that really going to like they've kind of already lost people? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it's so. it's really a shame in my opinion. Oh dear. I feel like one project shouldn't be enough to kill a studio, 
but anyway These are perilous times they are perilous times and um you know sometimes the industry just needs a don quixote figure to to just really lead the charge forward and in the past that man has been peter molyneux and he's back he's back in the news peter molyneux of course uh was responsible for uh the fable series with mm -hmm. his his team at lionhead uh and he's known for over promising <laughs> this man he's he's his brain works differently and i love him for it and he's he's teasing a new project with an idea that has never been seen in a game before Okay. And that's really all that's he's bold. giving us. Yeah, he spoke to Game Reactor. Uh, this is reporting from a Eurogamer article by Tom Phillips. And Molyneux was reluctant to give details because he didn't want people to be getting annoyed and angry when their expectations are met with reality. And he said, in days gone by, I would just start telling you about the whole game and the whole game design and why it was going to be the most brilliant game in the world. I'm not going to do that. But what he did say was that the all new mechanic would be part of a more familiar environment that was more like a kind of fable, black and white dungeon keeper kind of experience. Okay. okay. And this description appears to relate to the fact that the project is planned first for PC and consoles rather than other titles at Molyneux's 22 Cans development studio that were designed around smartphones. And if this project comes together, it will be Molyneux's first project released on consoles in over a decade wow. since the Connect Fable game, The Journey. And that was back in 2012. Jeez. And I love the Fable series. Fable The Journey was awful. I, I really wanted a good Connect game. Fable The Journey was not it. Um, we're definitely leading on PC and console, mainly because we need the power, Molyneux confirmed. This is the first game I've really coded or been a coder on since Black and White, so it makes it very special for me. It has been evolving, and we've been exploring ideas about it for almost five years now, so it's very, very close in my heart. Huh. And I cannot wait to see what this will be. Um, even though he he tends to overpromise he does largely produce great games and i i i love following molyneux and his career and and the things he says um some of his most recent things have been a little weird there was uh curiosity what's inside the cube that was a mobile app it was it was really it was a successful game but it was it was also very controversial because there was a promise of a life-changing prize for the first player to actually get to the center of the cube. And there wasn't really, there wasn't really. I love this but, like announcement of him and he's like in the mm -hmm. cube and it's a terrible green screen. <laughs> so good. Like My mom actually loved that cube game and all it was was just tapping on the tiles of the cube and breaking them. Uh, it was, there was not much game, uh, but he's done, <laughs> you know, primarily mobile titles for the last few years. Mm -hmm. And the final uh, line in this article is another Molyneux quote. Every part of me wants to tell you everything about it, but you know, that would be silly. Yep. So has, has this man turned a new leaf of, of not over promising things? We shall see. Hmm. We shall see. Um, well, maybe it's something for us to mull <laughs> anew over. Nice. <laughs> That was terrible, and I love it. I love it. Uh, oh. Speaking of things that are terrible. <laughs> that was so, all part of my master plan. <laughs> Silent Hill 2 is getting a remake. We reported on this in the past, and Bloober Team is heading that up. Bloober Team is responsible for Layers of Fear, they did that game that we rage quit live on stream. Do you remember that? It was like a cyberpunk weird game. Uh, it was a long time ago, but it was the only time I've ever rage quit a game on stream. And uh, you were hanging out with me for that one. I don't remember. But that. it's been years. Um, and they also did the more recent Blair Witch game, which was actually pretty good. Um, but 
according to this IGN article by Ryan Dinsdale, the in terms of the Silent Hill 2 remake, they are wanting to move on from psychological horror to focus on something more mass market. So um, 2023's Layers of Fear was an all-in-one remake of the first two games and their DLC. And that will be the last um, the last psychological horror game. Oh, they also made The Medium, uh, which Rick and I did a full playthrough series of uh, that you can find on youtube.com slash we just love games if you would like to see that. <laughs> um, but they are switching over to games that are more action focused and require more from the players, something closer to Resident Evil. Mm. They say uh, in this quote, Bloober Team's co-founder Pietro Babino says, we focused on the story, we focused on the mood, we focused on the quality of graphics and music, but we didn't put a lot of attention on the gameplay mechanics. It wasn't our target, but we decided there was a ceiling we couldn't break if we did not deliver something fresh, something new. We decided our next title should be much more mass market oriented. We'd like to talk with more people to deliver our ideas with our DNA, not by environment or by storytelling, but by action. And the first of these games will be the Silent Hill 2 remake. And I think that's terrible because Silent Hill 2 is intrinsically a psychological horror game. Hmm. That's that's what its bones are. Why would you want to turn away from that? You know, that's that's why people that's why people love the Silent Hill series. That just seems like such a strange decision. I hope that they mean that they are focusing on this these gameplay improvements in addition to continuing to deliver those other items in terms of environment and mood, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Um I I'm still hopeful that the Silent Hill 2 remake will be good. I'm a little more cautiously optimistic now after hearing this. Okay. What are your thoughts? I mean, I don't have any on on this particular thing because I I haven't given a single shred of a brain cell to thinking about Silent <laughs> Hill. Um not my genre. So, right. But a remake, I mean, there it's very niche. Horror horror games are very niche, right? So mm -hmm. the people who have come to love and know Silent Hill uh, 1 and 2 are probably going to love a remake. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We'll just so, have to wait and see, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if they can afford to do it and it's going to make more money. do it there's better games to remake though <laughs> yeah like fallout new, new vegas or you know <laughs> clearly superior video games to remake just saying that's all i've got for the news oh really really oh okay let's roll on into stocks As always, these prices are in comparison to last week's episode of a GameStack podcast. Sony closed out today at ninety-one oh four, exactly one dollar up uh, in price compared to last week. Microsoft at three thirty-seven twenty-two, down three dollars and thirty-two cents. Nintendo closed out uh, at eleven thirteen, down a quarter. Take two interactive at 143.19 down three dollars and 97 cents activision also down almost two dollars at 82.43 ubisoft down a dollar 64 at 24.24 ea down just five cents at 129.20 or sorry 50 cents uh 10 cent games uh holding steady up by 39 cents at 42.88 so in comparison to last week, all the stocks were up this week. They're all kind of down, um, but uh, marginal, marginal differences. So that is the stocks. Do we have any? You've got mail. Mail, Shaleen. Oh, you're muted. I'm sorry. I always <laughs> do that. When I need to type, I mute it, but then I forget to unmute. So we have mail from Tasman NY. 
And Taz says, hello, friends. I am here to report on the latest happenings of the SS game stack. Unfortunately, due to a navigation error as the game stack was coming out of a hyperspace jump, she collided with a nearby asteroid and was damaged beyond repair. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Uh, remind, uh, remind me what game it was that he was playing. Is Taz in the chat? Space Taz, engineers. what game is this in? Space Engineers? Yeah. Uh, we've been following this saga for quite a while now, if anybody's new here. Uh, she was near a planet called Pertam when the accident happened. Fortunately, the crew and WJLG dignitaries managed to get off safely to the planet's <laughs> surface. All escape pods were found and recovered, but one. Though Vender and Shaleen were found safely, Rick's pod is missing. And efforts are now in constructing a large rescue rover to search for Rick. Further details will come as operations commence for Rick's rescue. This is the best little story. <laughs> I love it. Keep these coming, Taz. Like these that, are so entertaining. It's like that. It's like that time I played Sims mm -hmm. and I made you and Rick, and you both died playing yes. making pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> so good so good oh man <laughs> well uh i'm glad that we we managed to safely arrive to the planet's surface but i am rather concerned for the fate of rick um uh, yes fine. so it's rick as long as he has like like some some music or something he'll yeah. be fine yeah <laughs> he'll be just fine exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> Poor Rick, he always gets the he always gets the blunt end, doesn't he? God of Radio in chat says, "Ha ha ha!" WJLG dignitaries, I love it. <laughs> I do too. That killed me. That was such a good line. Um, any other mail? That's the mail for this week. All right. Well, it's time for everybody's favorite part of the show, which is screenshots and stories. And this is in no particular order. I think I'm going backwards here, actually. Um, this screenshot comes to us from RTZ13, and he says, got some more Uncharted shots. This game is very pretty. And there is an image of him in a uh, open cab Jeep, like military off-road Jeep. And uh, in the background, mm -hmm. there's some mountains and the, the clouds and the mountains, and they're in the like a treed area. It looks really good. That's pretty. Um, this one here is from Taz. He says, planting a field for grass uh, cut for hay and silage. Uh, and this is in Farm Sim. Uh, I presume Farm Sim 22. Uh, although this is uh, not the map that we have been playing on. This is a different map. It does not look mm. the same. Yeah. But uh, he's got his tractor there getting ready to cut some grass. And uh, here's another shot he sent in. He says, my great uncle used to have a dairy farm and milked 400 head of cattle a day. And this was the milk storage tank. And then, uh, so it's a picture of this massive milk yeah. storage tank. And then uh, there's another uh, tank here, another image of a tank as well. That is cool. Yeah, pretty cool. Uh, and then we have an image coming in from Ted, 2371. Uh, Ted says, looking to get Stray completed soon as it's leaving PS Plus in July. And this is a picture of the cat from Stray standing on some pipes and behind him a robot friendo. Um, oh, it's in, they're in like a, like a boat, like a, mm -hmm. like a, some sort of. Yeah, it's like a little raft. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's super cute. The robot has I need a to go back and face. finish that game. Yeah. I love the robot characters in this game. Uh, this image comes from Frankie. She says, uh, the ESO server is down, so I went through my screenshots. You can pet the animals. Oh, look at the kitty. She said, this is Galen, last year's Q4 DLC. And she's holding this cat with red eyes. And she's petting it. And it's giving her snuggles. And it's all cute and adorable. And then this one, which basically broke me. This this adorable golden retriever who is oh. shaking a paw and she's petting him and he just looks so happy he looks a little bit like um clifford though he's a little bit disproportionate yeah i see what you're saying mm -hmm. <laughs> dogs kinda, i feel like he's a big. he's a like a juvenile dog still 
Yeah, yeah. He hasn't quite grown into all of his features. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when puppies have those massive feet mm -hmm. and they just haven't grown into it. Uh, and then the last image she sent here was uh, one of her in the stables petting some horses. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's beautiful horses. Uh, we have one last image from, actually, we have a couple more from Frankie. She submitted quite a few this week. Um, uh, oh. she says also, also out of context, this is a quest screenshot. And, um, so this, this, there's a man on his hands and knees in the middle of the grass and he is labeled enchanted sheep. So I don't know if he's a, a sheep. But they they turned him into a man, or if he was began as a man and they turned him into a sheep and then back. Well, I, I, I it's, yeah, it's pretty obvious to me. Sheeple, sheeple, wake up. That's what they're talking about when Do they say research. wake up, sheeple. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's it cute all makes so there's much a little, sense. There's a little caption that says "bah," <laughs> <laughs> and then I don't know. Use the spoon of undo. <laughs> That's that sounds appropriately zany i don't the spoon of undo yeah yeah i don't know about the spoon of undo i don't i don't want that that sounds like i feel like time. there has to be the involvement of that one daedric prince i forget the name the wabajack guy yeah okay and yeah. then i don't know what the heck is going on here she says just a few non oh my god there's a <laughs> giant spider on my that wall. is yeah that's... no 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 there's a oh, giant no. spider on my on wall. your wall in real life uh, you're not talking about the one in the screenshot. I've uh, got to kill this thing. Yeah. Shane. Okay. You do that and I'll describe the screenshot. There is a giant spider in the screenshot as well, but it seems to be a beast of burden uh, because it's, it's carrying a bunch of pack items, some bed rolls and some boxes. And uh, it's hanging out next to this tent. And there's a little teeny, I think they're called a guar, like these little, little lizard guys. Um, and it's, it, I love ESO screenshots. So that means you have to move. It's lost. You don't know where it is now. Yikes. Oh, really? Oh my, that's, that's, he's had a worse day than we have. Yeah, I, ooh, that's horrible. So maybe you got him then. Not cool. Oh, this is gorgeous. Is this more ESO? Mm. Seder says that he can't hear you. That would be because I'm muted. I'm sorry. Okay. Let me just mark. Um, how far are we into the stream? What's, no, what's a time it's stamp? okay. I'm just going to reread what Frankie said because there's no sense. She I still says, need to edit. Just a few non-spoilery shots of the newest ESO chapter. Uh, Necrom, Hermias, Mora is the Daedric Prince this time. So we're visiting uh, Apocrypha, though we begin in Telvani Peninsula. And I apologize, people. I It's the spider. We blame it on the spider, okay? <laughs> Apocrypha is one of my favorite places in Elder Scrolls lore because it's full of books. Ah. And, uh, yes, yes. Uh, and then she sends this beautiful screenshot of this landscape with all of these weird plants that are glowing. And there's this tree that looks like it has streamers for branches. And uh, it's super pretty. I like it. And then this one of this like weird cave with this trolley dude and he's got a stack of books. A book stack. Book stack. I, I feel like we should do a book stack podcast because I really like books. Probably. And this Look last at all these image, books. The last the book room image, is made of books. It is the book room and it's columns of stacks of books and there's books everywhere. Okay, we need to talk about this because I know that I would swiftly undermine the structural integrity of this building. 
because I wouldn't in, indubitably decide to read one in the middle of a column and and the whole building is coming down. Yeah. yeah. This is a bad way to build a room. Uh, I believe if, if these are load bearing pillars that the, these books are made of, if, if they are load bearing pillars, then the whole thing's coming down because I, I just I need to read the treaties in the middle. So this next image comes from Taz. He says, here's the rescue rover called Rusty Lemon. And for reference, it is yellow. <laughs> um, construction has been completed and also Rusty Lemon on a shakedown run while salvaging a downed spacecraft. She will be the base of operations for the rescue of Rick. The Rusty Lemon. When life gives you lemons, use them to save your friends. Yeah. Sold me a lemon. Um, and then here is another image of the rover. Um, and it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, I wonder this how is super fun. Like, how big is this thing? Like, is that the cockpit? Like, is that I where think the so, control yeah. room is? Because mm -hmm. if that's the case, this thing is massive. It is. It's right? a building on wheels. Uh, okay. Oh, this looks so pretty. What is this? This is from Green Camps, and he says holiday fireworks in World of Warcraft. It's the Dragon Flight Zone in Valdraken. And uh, it's literally, there's like all kinds of people there, and there's fireworks everywhere, and dragons flying around, and it's just a magical time. Presumably for 4th of July. And this amazing photo... Uh, this is the second of RTZ's Far Cry, or sorry, sorry Uncharted uh, screenshots. And it's uh, his character standing over a town that is all overgrown. And there's a cathedral in the background. It looks amazing. Yeah. Anyways, that is our screenshots and stories. Now let's talk about what we've been playing. It's been a super busy week for me, so I haven't played much of anything. I did play a little bit of farm sim. Um, I got my sunflowers planted and rolled, and I've got lentils. No, nope, I've got soybeans. You're muted, Shaleen. I've got soybeans planted in my other field. I still have to plant my canola, um, but that I is... I demand photos of the blooming sunflowers when they when Sure, they sure, sure. I'll make sure that I get that for you when they grow. Um, it's May right now in on the server, so we're still trying to do uh, planting and getting everything ready for the summer. So, but um, I haven't played really anything else except the My Vegas app, which yeah is so incredibly addicting. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm at like six hundred and fifty thousand gold. I did try out that app. It's a pretty good slots app. Yeah, it's not too bad, and there actually isn't a lot of, like, ads. Mm -hmm. And the microtransactions really only play when you go back into the main lobby after mm -hmm. a while. But other than that, that's pretty much it. Like, you don't have ads in the slots themselves, which is nice. But um, but I do have the Switch itch. Yes, I want the, you to get it. I've got the Switch itch, you guys, and I'm waiting for like a sale or a deal, but they don't really go on sale. They don't like, go ever, on sale. So. No, pull the trigger. Yeah, I've got to wait probably a little bit because um, like financially, but um, I'm yeah, thinking probably August or September. But yeah. I was talking to Carla last night and I'm like, yeah, I really want to get a Switch. And I'm like, should we get the family membership? Because then you can use it and get games on your switch and then we can play games together and blah blah blah, mm -hmm. blah. and he, and i was like well i'm like you're gonna have to wait till september because like i don't really want to get it until then because mm -hmm. i'll just be distracted and not get anything done and he's like well maybe i'll just get the family membership for myself and i'm like no <laughs> you can't get it because then i have to get it switch and then i was like wait a minute maybe you should get the family membership now <laughs> then i can get the switch I really, I really am so excited for you to have a Switch. I know. I want you to have Animal Crossing, and I, I want our little Animal Crossing people to be running around. I can give you so many cute things in Animal Crossing. I, I just, I, I'm so excited for this. Yeah. And then, you know what I was thinking? We could do, like, streams. Mm-hmm. 
of Animal Crossing together. That would be fun. And that would be so much fun. We could do like a, a Mario Kart. Uh, we could play Mario Kart. Mm-hmm. We could play Mario Kart. We could play Mario Kart with listeners. Like what's the new Super Mario Brothers? Wonder? Wonder. Yeah. Yeah. We could play Wonder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I'm so in favor of this. Make it happen. Is is Legend is is Tears of the Kingdom multiplayer? No, it's single player. It's single but player. you should still play it. Yeah, I probably will. I need to play really Bre- good. I need to play Breath of the Wild first. Also really good. Yeah. Um Yeah, so anyways, um <sighs> I haven't looked at the Steam Summer Sale yet. Um I'm trying to avoid it because it's dangerous, but I'll probably get up to playing some video games tonight with Jess if she's if she's available. I know that she was traveling to she was like in Idaho or Utah or something. Um, but she's home now, so what have you been up to? Well, I have been doing some gaming lately. I I'm playing Fallout seventy six. Uh I've been trying to keep up with the homework. I'm not doing it daily, but I am doing it uh, a few times a week. So ranking up that scoreboard, I checked out the new uh, public test server because I, I think we mentioned last week on the show that they didn't give us patch notes for it. They said, go discover what's new, basically. Yeah. yeah. So I started a new character on the PTS and uh, discovered some of those new changes for myself. It is going to be an option uh, when these changes are brought to the live game to start your character at level 20 instead of starting with a brand new baby character. So oh, that's kind of nice. Yeah. And they, they definitely give you a lot more support in the early game than they did previously. I started out a baby character instead of choosing the level 20 and I had no shortage of weapons and ammo and aid and, um, which in, in some ways that's a good thing. It's friendly to new players. But I kind of don't like that they're just continuing to nerf the game just over and over again, making it easier and easier. And in the beginning, it was definitely, definitely partially a survival game. It was, you know, you had to eat, you had to drink, you had to manage all these things. And it was scary sometimes. And that fear is long gone. And it's it's a very different game than it was at launch. And I, I can't really, I don't really have an opinion on whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's, it's definitely very different. So uh, they replaced all the robots around the vault with ghouls. Oh. Yeah, I don't like it. I liked the little robots being there. Yeah. I thought they were adorable, but... Yeah, lots of small changes. They've added some new perk cards, one that affects the weight of rifles, um, another that affects your damage with, uh, I believe it's one-handed melee weapons. Uh, But lots of changes. Nothing too, too major, but it was fun hopping onto the PTS and, and finding them for myself. And it was it was kind of fun just experiencing the the beginning again yeah, you know yeah go when you go through like all of the mm-hmm. cardboard cutouts and stuff yes exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. it was fun huh. uh, i see you keep glancing to the side or are, are you still thinking of the spider yeah i'm just I'm yeah gonna see if it's like crawling on the floor next to me yeah because it definitely fell like underneath my desk somewhere that is so, so concerning yeah i'm um, fine everything's fine <laughs> I uh, I spent some time playing on my quesadilla character, who I, I named quesadilla because I created her to cheese level ups. Oh my god! <laughs> yes. <laughs> All I of should, her. I should make a I should make a companion character and call <laughs> him Velveeta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah all of her perks and special and the entire build was based on leveling up as fast as possible because um the scoreboard had those level up every day challenges but uh i am also using quesadilla to go through the last few achievements that i have on xbox okay. pc okay 
So I was doing some enclave events with Quesadilla to try and, and work on that uh, achievement. And I was really struggling with this pack of ghouls. There were just tons of ghouls. And somebody started shooting these ghouls over my shoulder. And I was like, oh, what a relief. Thank goodness. Somebody's here to help me. And I assumed it was this guy that had helped me with the last enclave event I had done. I figured he just joined me at the next event. And he was a high level player and he was super nice. He gave me some things because I was kind of lower level. And um, I was so relieved because I thought, yeah, this nice guy is going to help me do this event. Nope. It was 14 super mutants. Uh, and as soon as they killed the ghouls, they turned on me. <laughs> <laughs> Friend, so it was, it was a problem. It was a problem. <laughs> so it's uh it was a hard battle to okay. to come through these super mutants, but eventually I did it. I, I was victorious with this event. So, but it was just, that's the kind of thing that you don't really experience when you only play with your high level character. Right, right. Because I, part of the fun of video games is to know fear. You know what I mean? Yeah. If, with no fear of death, sometimes games can't be fun but yeah it you might as well just play it in creative mode mm -hmm. right i also went back to tears of the kingdom i realized that i had quit playing for a couple of weeks because of the pickle that i got myself in with that green crystal in i think i mentioned that yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I i knocked it off and and it's in the water and my boats were failures and the rescue min mission didn't go well so i decided to just abandon this green crystal and go have fun with my life just just move on <laughs> and enjoy myself because there's this whole big world there that's yet to be explored okay okay and there was an update for the game so i installed the update and it reset the green crystal so uh i no longer have the underwater green crystal it is back in its beginning location ah. so i have another chance to do New it plan. right yes. so what are you going to do this time then uh, I'm going to worry about it later is what I'm going to do. <laughs> Still I dropped, your best life. Okay. Yeah, I dropped a pin on the map to remind me to go back to it eventually, but uh, I decided to move on and live my best and life. what is the significance of this crystal? The crystal will unlock a shrine. I have to get it to a certain location. There's okay. a light that comes out of the crystal that's telling okay. me where to go. Okay. And when I take it there, a shrine will rise up. Oh. And the shrines are how you increase, you solve puzzles in the shrines. And that's how you increase your health and your stamina. So, okay. Um, I decided to go back to the main quest, but then I got distracted by this chest that was in the middle of a lake. So I built a really long bridge to get to this chest in the middle of the lake. Like you do. <laughs> Um, yeah, because you can build anything. So you just yes. like, built a okay really long bridge. That just, defies just a physics. Stupidly long bridge. Yes, it was yeah. definitely a physics defying bridge. <laughs> so fun. Oh. And I was walking to my next map marker and I saw these two guys, these two little goblin dudes, right? And it's just two guys, right? I, I should be able to handle two guys. I, I'm this big knight. You know, I have I have a lot of experience fighting enemies and i'm i'm fairly good at, at this game no those guys ate my lunch man they <laughs> they killed me so hard and every time i would go in i would try okay. a different approach i see the spider okay so i'll keep telling the story while vendor does actual combat uh with a an rpg monster we'll see if he gets some experience points potentially levels up but <laughs> i was um I was trying different techniques on these two bokoblins and I went in with, I went in with arrows. I went in with powered up arrows, all kinds of things. And they just kept steamrolling me over and over. I probably died seven times to these two enemies. And eventually I just had to run past them as fast as I could go because there was, there was no other solution. So I just ran past them. Okay. He scurried back under the desk before I could get him. Oh no. So stupid spider. Sorry. It's fine. And Everything's fine. 
I found the Zora's domain. So that's the next section of the of the quest of the story. Uh, there'll be, I guess, minor spoilers if you don't want to know anything at all about the game. Uh, the Zora, of course, are fish people. I, I don't know how much you know about this. Yes. Uh, yeah, because you played some Zelda, right? Yep. Yep. So the Zora are the fish people. And in Breath of the Wild, did you see like all the Prince Sidon memes with with Prince Sidon the Shark Man? No. <laughs> He was great. I loved him. He was this really encouraging guy. And uh, I got to meet his new fiance. She's lovely. Yes. <laughs> what a delightful woman. And they have a statue in their town square of Prince Sidon and Link. Okay. And they keep emphasizing that it's Sidon is his best friend. They're like, oh, yes, your best friend, Prince Sidon, is is over here, you Amazing. know, and you can go find him. And, um, oh, look at this statue of, of you and Prince Sidon. I mean, excuse me, your best friend, Prince Sidon. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I love that they keep focusing on that. Uh, it, it makes me giggle. That's great. And uh, now my quest is to get my Zora armor back. Okay. Uh, the Zora armor enables you to swim up a waterfall, which of course makes traversal much, much easier. Right. So um, I've got to find a, a particular type of fish and they'll, they'll fix my armor for me. So, right. Okay. Well, I I've look also... forward to the next, to next week's story <laughs> of tears of the kingdom. I've also gotten back into Animal Crossing New Horizons, yes. as I always inevitably do. It's summer here in the Northern Hemisphere, and that means beetle season. <laughs> and I am all business about these beetles, my friend. <laughs> yes, there are about six, maybe eight beetles that I've never caught before. So I, I don't have them in my museum. They are not filled out in my Critterpedia. And I must get them to, to complete so I I went and planted a bunch more palm trees to try and hopefully increase the likelihood of finding the beetles. Okay. And I put together a cute beetle hunting outfit, you know, with some practical shoes and a little bag to keep the beetles in. Right, and right. Yeah. <laughs> so I am all about this beetle hunt. And there's also um, a couple of, of the diving creatures that I haven't uh, found. And one of them is available in the summer. It's the horseshoe crab. I spent two hours last night diving for horseshoe crabs and what? finally, finally found one. Oh my God. I dove until my thumbs hurt, Vendor. Like I, I was on a mission and I finally got this stupid horseshoe crab. So <laughs> I am getting pretty close to museum completion, except for the art. The art takes a long time. Okay. Okay. And uh, probably after the show, I'm, I'm probably just going to go beetle hunting. <laughs> My last thing is not a game, but I did want to shout out um, Archon and I took my nephew and niece to see Across the Spider-Verse in the theater. Okay. And it was fantastic. What a great movie. And uh, there were some cameos from, from the video game Spider-Man universe, okay. which I thought was pretty cute. Okay. Yeah. I feel like that's a that's a nod to Across the Universe, mm -hmm. the original yeah. movie. That's like, Absolutely. is that what that it, they're doing there? Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, there was a really neat preview before the the movie about um, a person who was like playing Forza or or Gran Turismo. It was Gran Turismo, and he became uh, an actual racer from playing Gran Turismo. We talked, about and I thought this. that was so cool yeah, yeah, and i yeah. i, I want to like i want to see if we can get him on the show well and then there's that other that's there's that other ra nascar driver who basically said that he used video game tactics yes, to like to win save, the race to win the yeah mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> oh man that's really all i've been playing wow that's a show one hour on the nose so uh don't forget next Friday, everyone, is a fresh spanking new episode of Dame Stack, Avec Rick McVick, if we can find him, if he's still alive. Yes, if he doesn't die on the surface of Mars. <laughs> yeah. 
So uh, be be sure to tune in for a fresh new episode of Dame Stack next Friday, 6.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, right here on twitch.tv slash we just love games. Show is sponsored by Oak and Crow Coffee. If you head on over to oakandcrow.com, you can pick up a bag of We Just Love Coffee Blend. And uh, $2 from every bag of that blend goes to the Children's Miracle Network. You uh, can send us some mail by posting in the mail stack channel in the Discord, or you can send us an email at info at we just love games.com. We are also on Twitter at we just love games, Shaleen at Shaleen L, myself at Vendertron N. We're also on Facebook, facebook.com slash we just love games, facebook.com slash group slash we just love games. If you scroll down below and you're listening to the show live right now on twitch.tv slash we just love games, you can get into our Discord. The link is there. Um, we record the show every Friday live, so be, please join us next Friday at 6.30. And uh, we're also on iTube. Uh, uh, iTube. <laughs> Oh my goodness. We're on iTube and and YouTunes. <laughs> iTube and YouTunes. <laughs> and Stitcher and iHeartRadio and um we're not on our we're on Apple Podcasts, but what's the one that's going away? Stitcher. Stitcher. So we're going to be on Stitcher mm-hmm. for a little bit until they die. Until they die. Yeah. But thank you all for listening. Shalene, I'm going to leave the last word up to you. Um I don't know, guys. I need to go and and practice for Pokemon Sleep. (laughs) That means napping. My intense training regimen. Yes. Have a good night, everyone.